Absolutely. This is the, um, is this the gin one? <coughs> we had a, a little bit of a nightmare journey, being as it's, we're about an hour and a half away, about 60 miles. We've got roadworks on the M6 and we got here about 20 minutes ago. So if we do look rather hot and flustered, the reason being is we were presenting at a workshop yesterday, presenting last week, now, now, the voice is starting to go and I'm doing about four lives every week on TikTok. So I do apologise. So, does anybody relate? Oh, let's go up in here, that's better. Does, I'm just thinking that, you know, if I stand up, if I'm about six inches taller, my weight is actually the right for my height now. I wish, okay. So, actual MRI scan of an ADI's brain the hour before their last standards check. Does that relate to anybody? Yes. Okay, quick show of hands. Who here is PDI or just starting off? Oh, fantastic, guys. Lock the door, Lee. Don't let them out. Instructor, sort of one, two, three or four years. Fantastic. Old hands, like lots of years in the industry. So there is a few of us. Do you know the workshop we did the other day, we had instructors who had been instructing for 40 odd years. And then we've got some newbies who just done his part one, starting his part two. And I think the, the one we did last week, we got a real big range of people, hadn't we? So, and afterwards. So, welcome to the elevator pass, part two, three, standards check, nerves and anxiety and how to quell them. Who here looks forward to their part three or their standards check? Yeah, there's always somebody that needs more therapy than others, but um, <laughs> are you sure you're in the right room? <laughs> Who here is like, yeah, okay, it's not so bad. Who here is like, oh my God, I feel sick at the thought of it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much of a, an average amount. So if you're dreading it, I guarantee that I can help you with your nerves. I guarantee I can control them. How good does that sound? Pretty good? Only problem is I'm good, but not that good. I can't do it in 30 minutes, guys. But we have got some amazing resources for you. So today, I'm going to explore how we actually create anxiety. Now, that's a bizarre one, isn't it? Because we just assume, oh, I'm, I'm a nervous person. The standard check or part three is coming. I get anxious. I can't do anything about it. Got news for you. You've created that anxiety, which is, you're nodding. That's interesting because most people are going, I can't do anything about it. Well, you can. So, free resources available to help you today. If you come across to the stand, we're just in the main hall, the elevator pass stand. We've got cards there that you can either take the business card or scan the QR code. And you get the How to Beat Part 2 3 Standards Check Nerves Anxiety ebook, totally free. Features some of our great techniques. I know Eric and Isabella, Lee at the back, and whoever else has been to our workshops has greatly benefited and, and used the techniques. Say again, sorry? Fantastic. Say again, sorry? All over the country. And then when you come to the stand um, afterwards, when you get the card, we've got all the information on the workshops, where they are. Uh, Lee's hosting one up in Manchester. We've got Liverpool. We've got, uh, just on Reading, loads. We've got about 15 of them planned. Yeah, in various locations. And if there isn't one in your location, there's a form for you to fill in today. And if we can get en enough people in an area, we'll, we'll stick one on for you guys. Now, apparently, I've only got half an hour. And as Lee will tell you, I can talk forever. So my other half says. So you get the ebook totally free today. Also, we've launched a fantastic new resource called Mental Health Pro. Fantastic resource to help you and your pupils to determine the state of your driving test, mental health. And it's also for instructors. Hello. It's also, see that face? <laughs> It's for driving instructors and for PDIs and for the pupils as well. So Mental Health Pro, amazing free resource to everybody. Who here can remember this? Fault identification, analysis, rectification. Okay, those oldies amongst us can remember or that have been doing the job a few years. Fault identification, you've stalled. You analyse it. Oh, you're in third. You rectify it. 16 first. And OK, our training wasn't that basic, but that's kind of how it was back in there. So why don't we do emotional identification, analysis and rectification for our own part two, three standards checks? Why don't we identify 
what emotions are, dread, fear, overwhelm, panic, intimidation, fear, nerves, anxiety. Identify those, analyse what's causing them and rectify them. And there's nothing really out there that does that other than what Chris and I do. Anybody seen these before? Triggers? You will do, you'll get um, familiar with them. ADIs are feeling judged on their test candidate's performance. Would you agree? Absolutely. If your head and your pupil's head isn't in the right place and you get loads and loads of fails, no matter how confident, sorry, how competent your pupil is, they go to pieces on the day, you get so many fails or they get so many driver faults. Oh, welcome to your fortnightly standards check. Lots of nods going around the room with that. So one aim of this presentation is to help you to understand the role that cortisol and adrenaline play in your body and how to keep calm and to control your emotions. Lee, have you got the lock for the door? You've got the bouncers? Yeah, okay. You're not getting past Lee. We are going to ask two audience members at the end to come up on stage. No matter what level you're at at the moment, we're going to pick two of you, me and Lee, and you're going to role play a standard check briefing on the stage at the end. Is that all right? Oh, the looks on the faces. <laughs> Who's now going, thank you? <laughs> I do this on the workshops and people hate me. In fact, we actually had a lady in tears yesterday when I did this. I felt really awful because she actually, you know, we do the swapping the cards and everything. And she actually cried at the thought of having to do this. And then I felt really guilty and she was just looking at me daggers for about half an hour afterwards. The question is, how did that make you feel? Who here was excited and think, yeah, well, I don't mind going up on stage. Yeah, there's another one who's not right. <laughs> Oh, well, we know you would. <laughs> but who here had that feeling of dread, that sickness in the pit of your stomach? Loads of you. And probably the ones that don't acknowledge it probably felt it but don't want to acknowledge it. So did you think calmly, rashly, logically, well, I'm amongst friends, there's nothing riding on it, nobody died? Or did you feel those stress hormones immediately? Now, what we discuss on our workshops and the courses is the role that cortisol and adrenaline, the stress hormones, play. And we experience emotions how many times faster than logic? Can you remember? Thank you. We experience emotions. Somebody was listening the other day, weren't you? We experience emotions five times faster than logic. Isn't it scary? My words actually had the power to create adrenaline and cortisol. That's actually quite scary when you think of it just the thought of having to stand up here hello stranger it's lovely to see you yeah so the question is did i make you feel nervous or was it your choice now i reckon 90 percent plus people here will think i didn't have any choice it happened but you guys know and dave and lee and whoever else you know that you have the choice of how you want to feel but it's how do you do it learners adis pdis ask me all the time can you help me with my test nerves? No, not really. You're doing a great job of that all on your own. I don't need to help you with your nerves. You're already doing it. You're already good at it. You weren't born nervous. You weren't born anxious. You learnt it. If you are anxious about your part three standards checks or um, your pupils are nervous on test, you have learned to do that. And anything that's learned can actually be unlearned. So ideally, you want to choose the emotion that you want to experience. Now, when we do the workshops at this point, we explain in great detail, but in a fun way, hopefully, what happens in your brain when you get anxious, whether your calm, rational brain takes precedent or whether your limbic system, your chimp or your emotional brain takes over. And it's the emotional brain that takes over. I haven't got time to go into all that today. So what I'm going to explain is how we create emotions. So we have negative and positive language. And these create pictures. We think in pictures. If I ask you all to think of a subject at school that you absolutely loved, or the teacher, no matter how old you are now, you'll all go, oh, hard old, he was my teacher, he was lovely. Um, or you'll go, oh, gosh, I hated Mr. So-and-so at maths. No matter how old you are, you go straight back to school and you get that picture of that teacher. So you have the picture. You then get an emotion, joy, happiness, 
fear or dread. You get the thoughts, oh, I love this, I hate it. You then get physical sensations. Who here? You don't want to admit it, but a quick nod. If you felt the heart rate go or sweaty palms or that little bit of dread, you get the physical sensations. Then you get the behaviours. I hate this. I don't like it. I can't do it. So when we do our workshops and all our online courses, we talk about are you on your best behaviour? So behaviours, emotions, sensations and thoughts. Now, they don't start in that order. You have a picture in your head. You have a thought about it. Oh, my God, I don't like this. You have an emotion of panic. You get the physical sensations. Then you get the behaviour. But, hey, guys, it's nice because best looks good. And you can remember it that way. So how many of you have a pupil that is focused primarily on the mistake that they've just made or the Audi driver that's beat them or the roundabout that's coming up and then they miss the change in speed limit or the traffic light because they're not in the present. How many ADIs or PDIs on their part threes or standards check? They're, I was going to use a Derby word, they're worrying, they're worrying about what they should have said at the last roundabout to the pupil or worrying about what they're going to see at the debrief that they then fail the part three or standards check because they haven't noticed that the pupil's trying to move off in third gear with a handbrake on. Lots of nods there. So it's important to be able to be very present and not focusing on the past or on the future. Emotions, oh my God, I could be here all day. Fear, dread, stress, nerves, worry, panic, anxiety, intimidation. <laughs> Get the list as long as you want. You know, it's huge, all these emotions, and they don't serve you. Physical sensations, I've just put a few up here. Heart racing, just the thought of coming out here and doing a presentation. <sighs> the heart racers can't get the words out. Um, we split our instructors up into four groups. I'm just looking at time. Four groups when we do our workshops to look at behaviours, emotions, sensations and thoughts. And we were saying with sensations, you dry up. You freeze. Your mind goes blank. And you think, oh, what I should, what I should have said was, and you're just frozen at that point. Or somebody just trying to spell verbal diarrhea and they couldn't, so it came out as verbal vomit. And you try and get 40 hours worth of teaching into one sentence to prove to the examiner. It's just like, bleh. And you'll suffer with either or, depending on whether it's cortisol and adre or adrenaline. But again, we can explore that further. Thoughts, I hate this, I don't like it. Learners, I hate this roundabout, I always stall here. If I go to so-and-so examiner, I know I'm going to fail. Or if I go to par Parallel Park, I can't do this roundabout. Hands up, who gets that on a daily basis? All of us. And if you don't, you haven't been doing the job long enough yet. So to pass your test, you have to control your best. Would you agree? If you can't control behaviours, emotions, sensations and thoughts, you're not going to be successful. So how do we normally do that? Well, one of two ways. Give ourselves a good talking to. So on your test, get a grip, you're pathetic, you're stupid, you're useless, pull yourself together. Or we give in. I can't control how I feel, I'm just anxious. You weren't born anxious, you learned it. If anybody's ever heard of NLP, um, Richard Bandler, who invented it, you know, nodding, knowing Richard Bandler, I won't try and do his American accent, I won't put all his swearing in, but he basically said, yeah, I had a friend whose wife left him, he went away for a year to practice depression. Boy, did he get good at it. And it's the thought that it's a learned emotion. So how's that working out? Well, it's not because you give yourselves a good talking to, but you're beating yourself up and your emotions will always win because they are five times faster. You give in and you are subject to all the behaviours, emotions, sensations and thoughts that cortisol and adrenaline create. So you're kind of in the middle of the two. Anybody seen this before? Yeah. Right. We spend a bit more time on this in the workshops, but very briefly, there's three scenarios. <laughs> Aggression. Yeah. Obviously, in little, not Waitrose. <laughs> Beat the child up. We don't listen. We don't care why. We hurl profanities at it. We take away its voice. I've gone on the floor with my kid. And <sighs> Do you know somebody else said that? Yeah. Yeah, well, the problem is the fourth option doesn't fit into what I was saying, but that was a great one. Because <laughs> somebody, you were just saying that we had a lady say the same, that her child had a screaming fit. So in the middle of Woolies on a Saturday afternoon, she just got down on the floor, laying her back, screaming like this and shouting until the kid was so embarrassed she got up. You'll probably try that on your part threes, couldn't you? But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be repressed. It's going to be fearful. It's going to be anxious. Oh, a smug little look. 
I hate that child. <laughs> you know, what's it going to learn? There you go, darling. Have all the Haribo. Chuck up later. Have all the sweets. It's going to learn. Okay, if I kick off, I'm going to get anything I want. Who's in control? Child. Yeah, child is in control. But what about a third option? We nurture the child, but we set clear boundaries. Mummy loves you, but no amount of screaming or crying. Being absolutely, absolutely being proactive. But you're setting a boundary and you're finding a halfway house. What's the child going to learn? It's going to learn that bad behaviour isn't rewarded, but it's still nurtured, cared for and listened to. So we know we're going to choose option three. But why do most people not choose that? So I'm just checking I'm not going to fall off the stage. <laughs> why do most pupil, people, pupils and instructors not choose that? We choose aggression, we beat ourselves up, get a grip, get yourself some man-up pills, you're being pathetic. Or we give in and then you become a hostage to your emotions. Do they work? Of course they don't. Because you can't beat your emotions into submission by willpower because your emotions are five times faster than logic. But neither can you let them take over because you get the negative emotions, sensations, behaviours and thoughts which are going to scupper your chances of being successful on your part three or your standards check. So, the alternative. So we need a third option. One that enables you to think calmly, rationally, logically. Would everybody like to be able to think calmly, rationally and logically when they're on the part three or the standards check? Of course you would. How many of your pupils want to think calmly, rationally and logically, whether it's that big, busy roundabout or they're um, taking their test? So we need to know the role that cortisol and adrenaline play. Right, quick question. If you're afraid, are you in danger? Put your hands up if you think yes. Okay? Put your hands up if you think no. Put, there's a lot that aren't sure. Put your hands up if you think maybe, maybe not, or I'm not sure. Okay, lots of you. That standards check presentation, you might have been scared. A lot of you are going, I could see the looks on your faces. <laughs> I could see your heart race. But were you in any danger? Of course you weren't. You're in a, a room full of fellow ADIs. Nobody died. You weren't in any danger. But your body tells you that it is by the language you use, the pictures that you create in in your mind, oh my God, I'm going to stand on that stage, I'm only a PDR, PDI, what if everybody laughs at me, I'm an absolute idiot, well, I won't be able to get my, my words out, an experienced ADI, oh my God, I've been doing this job for 30 years, all those PDIs are going to be looking at me, expecting me to do it perfectly, and it's the same, wasn't it, at the workshops, you've got the range of people, some of them are anxious because they're PDI, some of them are anxious because they've been qualified for years. Okay, want some audience participation, by the way, I'm not going to make anybody come up on stage, Shout out how many types of cortisol and adrenaline you think there are. Six. Six, right, okay. Any advance on six? Two. Two, okay. One. One. Any advance on one, two, or six? Four. Four. Any advances? Right, so we've got between one and six types now of cortisol and adrenaline. If you were pushed out of a parachute, no, not pushed out of a parachute, if you were pushed out of an aeroplane with no parachute, the picture in your mind is one of fear. Would you agree? You're going to die. You've created cortisol and adrenaline. Would you agree? You've been pushed out of a parachute to your death. You are going to die in however many seconds. If you go to a horror movie, who here has been to a horror movie? What do you feel? Hot palpitations, and you know when the music comes on, and the, your mates told you that the bit when she's in the car and there's the guy with the knife behind her, and the music builds, <laughs> you grab onto your friend's arm because you know she can get strangled. Oh, guess what? Picture in your mind is what? One of fear. Guess what you've created? <coughs> Sorry? Yeah. So we've got two so far. We've got two so far. Part three, all your standards check. Oh my God, it's scary. I'm going to fail. What if I don't pass? The examiner's watching my every move. I hate this. What if my pupil makes a mistake? What if I miss it? What if I don't score in the risk assessment? What if I don't get this? What if I get a two here? No. Oh, picture in your mind is one of fear. Guess what hormones you've created? 
cortisol and adrenaline. I've got news for you. It's the same cortisol and adrenaline. There's only one. Now, there's different levels of it in different situations. But if the picture in your mind is one of fear, whether that be genuine fear, you're falling to your death being pushed out of an aircraft, or a imagined fear at a horror movie, or also an imagined fear on your part three or standards check, your body is going to respond in exactly the same way. How does your body know to produce the cortisol and adrenaline? How does it know how to do it? What do you have to do in order to tell it to produce it? Think. Sorry? Think. think it, yes, you think. You have the thought, you have language, you have the picture in your head that it creates the emotions, it creates the sensations, it creates the thoughts and creates the behaviours, creates these outcomes. Your cortisol and adrenaline doesn't have eyes, it doesn't have ears, it doesn't have sensors. It only knows, your body only knows what to do when you tell it what to do. And if you're telling it to be scared, if you're telling it to be anxious, if you're telling it on your part three that you're in fear of your life, then that is what you're going to experience. So you create this level of cortisol and adrenaline by the language that you use. How many of you have said or thought things like, I hate part threes, hate my standard check, I'm always nervous, I know I'm gonna fail. Yeah, lots of grins. How many of you, I'm gonna get you to put your hands up. How many of you have had pupils go, I hate this roundabout, I always stall, I roll back, I'm scared, he's right up my bleep, bleep, bleep. I don't like this, I hate parallel park. If I get this roundabout on test, I know I'm gonna fail, blah, 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 blah. And you go, oh no, you're gonna be absolutely fine. But if the picture in their mind is one of fear, you cannot learn. When we do the workshops, we do a similar thing. I'm not going to give too much away. But if we got our instructors on the workshops to stand up after lunch and do a presentation, how much do you think they'd be taking in during the morning? Absolutely bugger all because their mind isn't a picture of learning, of eager anticipation, of wanting to learn and wanting the knowledge. Their picture in their mind is one of fear. I've got to present this afternoon. I don't like this. Emotions, I might have mentioned this. How many times faster than logic? Thank you. Emotions are five times faster than logic. So if the language that you use to describe your part three is one of fear, panic, anxiety, overwhelm, dread, then this is what you're going to experience. So you're at a fork in the road. You've got on the right here, it goes to Anxiety Road, this layers to Fearville, which is where half of the world, according to World Health Organization, where half of the world is heading at the moment. Anxiety is on the increase. Those of you amongst us who've been teaching five, 10 plus years, I, I don't have to ask you, I know you've seen a rise in the levels of anxiety in your students. And we're more like therapists now than driving instructors most of the time. Or you can go to Happy Avenue, that leads to Pleasureville. Now, it's time to choose which road do you want to take. Do you want to go the road of anxiety and fear, or do you want to go to Happyville and be in control of your emotions? Now, up until this point, for the majority of people, they don't think they have a choice. Would you agree? Most people assume that an event happens in your life and your body reacts accordingly. It doesn't. There's an event, the adrenaline starts to rise, and then you can go, stop, 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 wait. Stop, 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 and wait. Is this emotional response appropriate? Is it appropriate to the event? My limbic system, my course on adrenaline, wants to be firing off, sending me into fight, flight, or freeze. Is it appropriate? Hell yes, I'm being pushed out of a bloody aeroplane with no parachute, I'm gonna die. Yes, it's appropriate. Oh, I'm going to a horror movie on my part three. Is this immense level of course on adrenaline that's flooding our bodies at this moment appropriate? No, it's not. Because you're not in any danger, your body just thinks it is. So, our ABC technique, this is all in our resources. Willpower doesn't work because emotion's five times faster than logic. So you can't 
beat your emotions into submission, but you can nurture them like the child in the supermarket and you can manage them. So the A of our ABC is to acknowledge and accept the level of emotion, ensuring that the emotion is appropriate to the event. And that's what we teach in our workshops and on our online courses, which I'll tell you about in a moment. B, just two little words. They are incredibly, incredibly significant. And these two words will actually halt and then bring, will halt the production of cortisol and adrenaline. The guys in this room that have used it know how effective this is. And it doesn't seem that effective. Just two little words. Dave's nodding, Lee's nodding, Arex. I don't know your name, sorry. Oh, so you're nodding as well. Calm breathing. My partner, Chris, is a psychotherapist as well as an ADI. I'm um, an ADI and a therapist, so together we specialise in this area. Um, during the workshops and the courses, he's got some amazing calm breathing techniques. Yesterday, we had a workshop of, uh, last week, 26 people. This week, about 15, 20. And we did the calming breathing at the end, and they're all going, <sighs> like this. And I've got visions of pile up on the M6 of 20-odd ADIs because they're all asleep, you know. So the calm breathing is demonstrated in our Driving Test Nurse Pro, which you can get access to today. The other, I'm okay. The other technique is thought field therapy. Who here has heard of it? I know, yep, okay. It is amazing. It's the treatment of choice for soldiers returning from Afghanistan with PTSD. Virgin Airways use it for fear of flying. And if anybody's old enough to remember Hurricane Katrina and the Rwandan genocide, it was actually used as a treatment of choice to help the survivors. When we do our workshops, we focus on the brain a little bit. Who here's read The Chimp Paradox? Yep, fantastic book, and we use that as a bit of an analogy. Steve Peters calls your frontal lobe your human bit, your rational, your logical bit, and that stores an event. Um, sorry, your parietal lobe is the, I'm sorry, I got the wrong way around. Your parietal lobe is the bit that stores an event, the computer at the back here. Your frontal lobe is the logical, rational bit of your brain that recalls the data of a past event or imagines a future event. You then have your limbic system, your emotional bit, your chimp, and this gets the emotional bit. So if you think of a holiday, the chimp will go to the parietal lobe think oh it's great the sun the sea the sex the sand the sangria got drunk every night it was absolutely wonderful your frontal lobe will then get there and think oh yeah we went on flight ba number whatever and it cost us this much and that's where we went when it's a part three or a standard check though we want our frontal lobe to get there first it's not scary i'm in control i've done all my training i know what i'm doing but it doesn't, chimp gets there first because it's five times faster. What TFT does is it disables the negative emotion. So you can recall the past event or the event coming up without the emotion attached to it. Um, this is amazing because we can use it for fears, phobias. Um, I work as a therapist as well. So we do when we do our workshops, we get somebody up to demo do a few demonstrations and uh, yesterday we did a uh, fear of um, snakes a guy was in the RAF so it took me about two minutes to cure him of this lifelong fear what was it at yours we did the other week sorry oh was it the lady with dyslexia can't remember oh the, yes the lady with bridges wasn't it it was the ADI with bridge and she's really northern it's like well he ain't gonna cure me at fear I'm not going away back home on that bridge. And after which she went, you're weird. <laughs> I'm off. Everybody always says, uh, lay your back with this up and David Hardy. That's weird. That's bizarre. What have you done to me? I feel strange. I can't get the feeling back. And until you've experienced TFT, you have no idea how freaking amazing it is. I've been doing it for 14 years. The first person it worked on was a girl called Gemma Colclough, who was terrified of driving on dual carriageways. Um, and within 10 minutes, we're flying down a slip road at 70 miles an hour with her going, this is fun. And my jaw's like this on the floor. 14 years on, I'm kind of gobsmacked if it doesn't work. It's, it's incredible. So if that wasn't enough... Chris, my partner, is a proper therapist. I apparently... Hi, anyone have the link for the video? The lady taps her hands and helps you remember your lefts and rights. So I'm, ooh, I'm the tappy hand dance lady, apparently. 
and the techniques will stop your pupils muddling up less rise. Is it effective? Yeah. Those of you who've used it. So, oh, that's not bad timing. If you, you can scan the QR code, I don't know if it, if it will scan from that, I'm not sure. But if you come across to our Isle of Wade Pass stand, I'll stand back here, I don't know whether it'll scan from there. But if you come across to our stand, grab the card and you can get a uh, standard check, <laughs> nerves. It says ebook, but we've just redone it actually as a course. So it's, it's in the new Test Buddy app as a course. You'll get access to that for totally free. And also we've got 25% discount off some other bits and bobs. Oh, so do you want me to go back one or? Yeah, well, that, I've got it. And Driving Test Mental Health Pro, it's a course. There's four sections of quizzes, 25 questions in each one, based on behaviours, emotions, sensations and thoughts. It's a really, really good resource. You can have it for free. You can give it to your pupils for free. You can stick it on your websites or your Facebook pages. Let me stand back so you can get that. You can stick it on your Facebook pages or your websites um, to say anybody can have free access to this, not just pupils. So it's a really, really great resource that you can give. Driving Test Nerves Pro. This is free for the first month, then $9.95 a month. And that's a, free, uh, that's a resource that you pay basically a tenner a month for to give access to all of your pupils up to 30 students on a rolling basis you can use it for own standard check part three nerves your pupils can use it for dry cheers Lee. the pupils can use it for driving anxiety and test nerves and it gives them access to all of the techniques in our driving test nerves online course as you can see here, you've got important information, instructor information, understanding your brain, our ABC technique, two minutes to change your life. So there's lots and lots of resources in there. It's all video based, little bits of writing because pupils like to listen to short videos now. So it's absolutely packed full for you. Do you know what? I did that in half an hour. That's amazing. Thank you guys. I'll pop that there. I don't know if we've got, it might did say something about we've got a little bit of time for questions. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, so it's not, so it's video and they can read it and it's within the, uh, the app will be launched shortly, but you just go to test buddy. Right, um, in that case, what you, it's not an audio book. Um, the reason for doing that is when we did all the, we, we do the learning styles because we specialise in dyslexia and dyspraxia. So people are very visual, they're very kinesthetic or they're very auditory. Um, so you can watch the videos, but if you prefer just to listen, just stick the video on, but listen to it. Okay. So yes, yes it is. Thank you. My pleasure, any questions? It's all gone quiet. They're all hiding. Anybody want to come out and do that presentation, by the way? <laughs> Hands up who's actually desperate to get onto this stage. Well, <laughs> Eric's coming. <laughs> um, does anybody, we've got, I think we've got a few minutes because Chris is on at quarter two. Does anybody want me to do a quick demonstration of why people muddle up lefts and rights? Right, can I have two volunteers dead quick? Come on then, you two. I'm just going to get this presentation off because my other half is going to be here shortly. Let me just get on to the next presentation, guys. I'm just going to put that on for Chris. Right, I've just set that up for Chris. Right, this is really, really quick. There's something called, this is very, very fast, something called psychological reversal. We go in and out of it 100 times a day. This is just a little bit of fun just to show something. Can, yeah, what's your name? Martin. Martin, Martin, can I just get you to stand in the front there forwards? And can you, what's your name? Kate. Kate, Kate come behind. Right, I'm just going to show you this as a quick demo. You don't have to do this in car, but we just do it in the workshops and it's a bit of fun. Right, Martin, do me a favour. Stick your arm out to one side. Kate, can you just put your hand on top of his? Now, what I want Martin to do is, 
the only reason you're doing this is for Kate to show that I'm not pushing any harder. Martin, just stick your hand, push your hand up as hard as you can against us. Okay, stop. That's one cool guy. Put your other hand here. By the way, there's no science. I'm just going to see how many stupid things we can get Martin to do a six on YouTube. <laughs> right, now with all your strength, push your hand up again. Okay, stop. Now flick your hand that way. Now push up again. Push your arm up. Okay, flat that way. Push it, oh, put it right over your head. Push up again. Okay, stop. Now flick it that way. Now push up again. Now drop your arms down. Now can you see both of those, it's quite strong. I'm not going to tell you what should happen because I don't want to preempt it. But your palms are positive, knuckles and nails are negative. So I'm going to get you to do the tappy hand dance. So I want you to tap the side of your hand a few times. Doesn't matter which one. Underneath your nose and the side of your other hand. That's it. Right, stick your arm out again. Right, hand there. Right, push up again. Okay, stop. Now flick your hand over there so it's over your head. Can it go over a bit more? Uh, so it's over the top of your head. Uh, that's it. Now push up again. Go on, push up, push up, push up. <laughs> Difference? Yeah. Did I push any different? No. no. Right, well, let's have a seat for a minute because I'm being very quick. Okay, now, you don't... <laughs> I would actually do more with this, but I've, it's really, really quick. When people muddle up their lefts and rights, who goes upstairs, forgets what they've gone upstairs for, looks for your glasses, they're on top of your head. I've normally got about three pairs up there. You're in this thing called psychological reversal. It's all explained in the videos and everything, but when you're in that state, your pupils will muddle up lefts and rights. You don't have to do that all, all that arm testy thing. That is just palms are positive, so the arm should be strong like that and weaker like that. But I didn't want to tell you that because it might preempt Martin trying to do something different. All you need to do with the tappy hand dance, tap here, tap here, tap here. It'll stop your pupils muddling up left and right. Does it work, guys, those that use it? It actually works on me because I'm dyslexic. Oh, you're dyslexic, so it works on you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually use it on myself because I've got yeah. you know, and actually, less than months, honestly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'll say, we're going to go... Le go left. Right. Go left. All right, I need to do my tappy hand dancing. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That was brilliant. Listen, I'm so sorry I haven't got more time, guys. My other half is speaking shortly, so I've got to go and swap. But it's lovely to see you all. And thank you, guys. Come, come and see me at the Yellow Way to Pass stand. Ooh. Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk. Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk.
Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk.